to say that we have three variables x y and z and let's name this with three companies let's say it to be a google the other as to be the hp okay and the next to be that the ibm all right then in the strings we have very common methods the first three methods as i i uh, might have discussed those things lower upper right the case folds and all all right so uh, for the definition what you are going to do is you just write the help of that and you will get the definitions all right so the purpose of the lower and the case fold is almost same the output what you see is almost same but the definitions have a bit difference okay like if i say x dot lower as a function which will convert the total value of x in the lower case the same if i write x dot case fold this will also do the same thing right okay when i run this we'll see the same thing right but there is a bit difference in their definitions if you go for this str dot lower you'll find that it returns a copy of a string converted to the lower case right but when you go for the definition of case fold, you'll see something different that it returns a version of a string suitable for caseless comparisons all right here when we are actually comparing the things we can use this right in that place we don't have to just like uh, convert these things right like don't have to convert up in the lower and all it automatically compares the thing like converting but keeps the original if you see the x see it is exactly the same what we have written okay next uh, same goes with the upper if we say print the simple ones it starts upper okay or if i say like a what is y my y is uh, hp right so if i say y dot replace now in replace function first you have to write the substring which you want to replace from that string like if i am having hp so uh, i will uh, make h as the smaller let's say okay so i'll write that this h is to be replaced by this h that's it okay so in the y string i just want to replace this capital h by the small h and then it will run this let's see the outputs so you can see the upper is totally making things up in upper or if i just write it in y it would be better so it's in hp and the second one you can see the things has been replaced okay that is how it works next comes a method called as format okay format is something like you will be having some curly braces somewhere okay and uh, uh, then you will be just uh, writing the format function to fill that gap basically right so if you go for the definition str.format see it returns a formatted version of a string using substitutions from arguments okay and the substitutions are identified the by the braces that's all right basically like if it is a string like if i say uh, print a string right x is equals to a braces okay So, see, this is inside a string properly, right? Now, if I say the format, so what is the value of x? I just have to write x. So, in place of that braces, we will be getting the values of x, right? See it. Okay. Now, when you want to give more than one value at a time, you don't need to write two times format, right? That is very simple. If I'm writing, then y and z is equals to this and this. Okay, y and z equals to 
presenters right so in that case i'll be just writing a format and then just y comma z clear one time the y value second time the z value you just run this and you'll be getting y equals to y and z is equals to hp and ip or in case you can do like this too right that y is equals to this and oh is equals and z is equals to this and you can run this so that the things okay so that is the thing now now there is a very uh, deep difference between the term capitalize between the term upper and between the term title sometimes student makes a misconception in we we all these things right so capitalize is something where your only the first letter of the word will be capitalized understood it will it is not like every letters of the word will be capitalized only the first one will be capitalized okay of one sentence if it is a sentence then only the first words first letter will be capitalized okay the very first beginning letter of the sentence you can say on only the beginning letter of the sentence will be capitalized now when you are talking about the upper the whole sentence will be capitalized and when we are talking regarding the title each and every first letter of the uh, respective words okay every words first letter will be capitalized okay you see the difference the moment yeah okay right so let's see the difference now if i say that uh, z what is the value of z okay i v m it is if i say z dot capitalize Next, I write set dot title. Now, uh, cap, uh, the upper one will not be having any effect because the z is obviously in the upper one, right? So let's do one thing. Let's convert the z in the lower case. Okay. Then z dot capitalize and z dot title and then z dot upper. We'll see the difference. See, uh, however, we'll also print the set. So see, the lower is something this, and we can even mention other things. You know, like uh, this, like this, making format and before format. Go it easily. Like this this and a dot this now that's it so the very first one is capitalized so basically the z so z is equals to this okay then give a gap capitalize is equals to this give a gap and title is equals to this give a gap and then upper is equals to this okay uh, let's run this no oh, errors uh, one one bracket is this so so z is a normal value capitalize you can see the very first one becomes a capitalize 
subtitle is the whole uh, thing becomes uh, capitalized and the upper one is different okay you can make even the gaps in between so that you don't get confused between the things someone is said i think yeah yes I will not come out. Okay, done. all right so this can be done in fact in the case of z we can make it as, as a word like uh, ml is a subdomain of ai okay let's run this so see the things ml is a subdomain of ai whatever i have written i'm getting the same things in the same way right the z the next is the capitalized what you can see the only the first letter has been capitalized and what is that being there and the rest of things are in lower case next is the title right in the title case what we are seeing that the first letter of every word becomes capitalized in the upper case what you see everything is being capitalized right so these are the things next moving on next is something like if i say uh, y equals to word power okay and i make a lot of space between them between the starting and the stopping i make a lot of spaces okay so to remo remove the space we'll be using a function called as strip okay so the strip will be removing the spaces from your left hand side and right hand side basically from the starting and the ending of your strings okay so if you say print y and print y dot strip you see the difference so this the space is what you can see is the complete spaces of the left and the right hand side and goes to the like it will go till wherever you have it, right? So if I remove the strip one, we'll see the output and it goes to here. It's starting from here and it goes till here. Okay. These are the spaces. Now to remove the spaces, what we can do is we can just print dot strip power. That's it. Okay. These are the easiest things, all right, to remove the strips. Now, uh, sometimes there are centers, a function called a center, where we basically use the spaces. Like if I write the same word, now let's, let me, let's take some, what is it? What is it? Right now. Y is word power, all right, what is X? Uh, see, uh, X is now uh, Google, right? So if I say that x dot center, okay, and in center if I write 20, that means 20 spaces, having 20 spaces, a count on one, like if you keep it counting, if you copy this all, okay, copy and paste it there, and you see how many spaces are there, right, so uh, if I just go with a new one, I go with the same spaces like making up there and like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And you can go with like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So total twenty spaces, or you can say the total occupancy of the string will be twenty. Having in the the string will be occupied in the 20 intervals, 20 uh, spaces, you can see. If it's a 100, it will be done as it. It's like that. Okay. The total size of the count will be coming as 100. Next. Now, in a string, like, uh, let's say, if I say S is equals to... is equals to program in this case if I say s dot uh, uh, if I just want to count how many m are there in the string so that way that is basically s dot count now what you want to count is the substring you have to write that is m I, have, I mean to count okay like that if I want to count how many g are there uh, you cannot write like two multiple things okay because one only can be there right 
so this 2 so that is the value you are getting that is m is being given for two times two times right now if you want to find the index value of that m you can just easily write that s dot index of m you see it's 6 right 6 means that the first m what you are getting is in the 6th position basically in the 7th position if you count from 1 right so s of 6 is m and also the x of 7 is m clear right so you'll never get the position of the very uh, second one or the third one and all all right only of the first one you will be getting the values only of the first ones all right that is important okay moving next next comes the uh, so in the lower also and in the like uh, there is a function called as find right now if you see guys if you find if it, there is a string okay and if you are finding any uh, such a substring which is not there like if i say in the programming if i uh, go for finding d so if i say uh, s dot index of d so you'll get a value error that substring has not been found okay now in case of the index we can use something called as find and the same s dot find of i say m so this also says that in the sixth position it is there right but in this case if i say s dot find of d I will get the output as minus 1. Minus 1 say, uh, says that there is no such substring. So in the find method if you uh, search for such a substring which is not present inside the string you will get minus 1 and if uh, the same operation you do with the function of uh, index you will get an error value error that substring is not found. Alright. Now for any uh, you can say uh, any strings which is in the lower case you can go for it like searching uh, if it is lower or not like uh, let's say I'm just writing lower okay so I just want to check whether this is a lower case or not that's it I run this you'll get okay true that is the lower case the same way I make a larger one that's all okay, right so a total how many functions are there easily again you can go and find other things like this right so there are a lot of functions to go there to deal with the things right or easily you can write help you will get all the things okay we'll be having a separate lot of questions around 40 50 questions a good number of questions for the single practice okay all right now you know what is an identifier you can see uh, right here yeah this is an identifier if we go over this help of str dot so use keyword is what is it yeah giving that return true if the string is a valid python identifier uh, i think identify you all know right we have been discussed this in the very first class in the second class i mean so like if there is an identifier it will give you the true result and if it is not then you will get a false result basically like a keywords if you remember other things okay now inside a string when you take any numbers like you say inside string 1 to 0 you have taken and you want to check whether these are the numbers this word, the user whatever he has input given the input as a number or not like in that case what you can do is is numeric so it's true what if I make like this is numeric false because if any of the number is not numeric you are not going to get any signs okay like this now uh, I think I should keep it here oh that now the next can also be done like uh, let's say this is a digit and 
again this is a digit now in digit what happens again you go for finding out things so uh, we basically if you want to go with the definitions you can go with the help and all to see the definitions so you will get understood all right okay next so these are the things uh, we go for finding out right now if in a substring or if in a string there is nothing given or it contains only the spaces if you check whether there is any space or not so it is true there are spaces okay so there are various things now if you have any decimal points right and you want to check that whether this is a decimal or not like you get the definition better Like this. If a string is a decimal string, or else for now, if a string a string is a decimal string, if all characters in the string are decimal and there is at least one character in the string. Okay. Next. Now there is a very interesting function called a split. A word split was let's say I am writing a web a web name, right? Uh, let it be HTTPS hyphen 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 dot a very common search engine. All right, everyone does with this. Now, if I want to check that whether my site is secured or not, what should I see? The very first thing is the transfer protocols. What we are using, like if it is HTTP, there is no such security. Or if it is having HTTPS then it is a secured one we can say right or it is or which domain which uh, lot of things can be there right so which domain uh, website we are using it's a commercial one Indian and organizational anything right anything can be given all right so like that you want to search it you can go with uh, split can works in various ways so if I want to see that which version, uh, like if the website is secured or not, with the very first thing. So web dot split. Now, if you inside the parenthesis of split, if you give any parameter, then it will split according to that. Like it will re remove all those things and will give a, a like a comma and will create subsets inside a list. Like uh, let's run with. If I say that. We want to see with the uh, columns like this and with this. All right. So when I run this, I'll get two outcomes. That is, this will be completely removed. So after removing this, what is in the right hand side? This is completely this. This is the right hand side. So this is one. And in the left hand side, what was there? HT. Okay, it should be HTTPS. And the left hand side this is there all right so these are the things right now what easily can i do is i will say that in the split of zero that is the first element the first element what i am getting is https i can say that the website is secure okay all right and the next like uh, similar to this if i say web dot Split. and I split by dots now in this case when I run this I'll get various outcomes right the first one with this second one with this and the third one with this so I need in this case I need the last one minus one this is the last one what I need to see like the domain what I'm using that's it okay like that now if you are going to split lines in that case there is a function called split lines so like if you are having new hyphen n uh, sorry backslash n and lines right and you just try dot split lines and it will create the two different substrings for that line and if you only run this
you get the output, right? If you write inside the print, you'll get a separate output once again. So these are some of the important functions of the string, right? Now there can be, sometimes there can be questions, like if I give you the question, right, like uh, calculate or find the sum of the individual numbers of a string. Of a random string, you can say, like that. Now, how can we find? Right? Like, let's say, what we can do is, if I'm uh, talking about the random, I can say from random. I'm going to just import random right now. Okay, and I'll say that. There can be any numbers like that, like n is equals to a three digit number I'm taking right now. Okay. Mm, random multiplied by 9. What value I will be getting in the random? If I run this, let's see, I'm getting a decimal value basically, right? From 0 point something, right? Now, what if I multiply it by 900? What's the value? 507, obviously, like this, right? And what if I add something to this, like what if I add 10, so this is 64 point something, let's add 100 and this is 300 six point something, okay. Now uh, if I say is equals to integer of n and then run this here, now I'm getting 129. So every time I'll be getting a new number, that is a random like, random number you can see. All right, so like we'll be getting a random number, obviously. Okay. Now, if I say this a string, that means I have to convert this in a string. All right, so print the n and then uh, this s will be equals to this str of n. Okay, and I will say three variables declare a, b, c, and I'll say integer of s of 0 you understand it right and i am taking what i am taking the individual index values of this integer of s of 2 0 1 2 because there are three numbers and in the string we will be picking 1 2 3 obviously right with, with that right and we will then print this that percent s for the string plus percent s for the string again and the percent s is equals to percent s all are in the strings because right and the values will be a b c and the last is a plus b plus c and let's run this so what we get the number is 393 and we get the sum of that is 3 plus 9 plus 3 is equals to 15 if we look on to S again, if I just print it, and also I print S of 0, S of 1, and S of 2. See? So 443 is the number, okay? In the string format, is 443, and the individual S of 0 is 4, S of 1 is uh, the 4, and S of 3, S of 2 is the 3. They get the sum. Let's run again. Okay. So this can be done. Right? Randomness of any number. Find the index and all. Alright. Okay. So uh, let's discuss the loops. Okay. Then we'll go to the questions. Now, what is exactly a loop? You can define as a 
the iterations which execute over a given interval of time or until a specified condition is being met like that so declare this Them. So we can write iterations which we execute yeah. over a given interval of time. condition is being met okay now these are of two types all right these are of two types now how Let's see, the very first is the for loop. Where actually we know how many times we need to iterate. And then the second, a very simple while loop. Here we know that uh, we can say here we declare a condition until when it has to run or execute. Okay, these are the two things, right? So uh, let's go with the while first. So we say while statement. All right. Now this will execute until a specified conditions you give becomes true. Okay. So what are the four important things in while loops? The very uh, the very first thing is the while keyword should be there. A condition must be there for column and fourth and indented block. Okay, understand indented block or the while clause. I understand this indented block, of course. Format should be correct while writing on the page. Okay, make this. So let's run this. Let's see how it comes. Now if I say a number is equals to 10, okay, if I go for finding the sum of this, how the sum will come? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. 55? Yeah, obviously. We get 55 only. Alright, so like this it will go. That depends on you, you start the sum from 0, you start the sum from 1, obviously. You will get the value same, right? There is no impact of 0 on the sums. Now, now if I say my x is equals to 1, and right now my sum is equals to 0. Okay? Now I will run the loop. Strike the lines, yeah. Now I will run this loop, and I will say that while my x value is less than or becomes equals to this pen until it becomes this. You keep adding the sum with x. Okay. And the next line, I'll say that print the sum is equals to sum. 
okay and next is very important that is incrementing x otherwise your x values will be kept as a constant one okay but you can name it as the updating counter or incrementing counter okay next so we'll print x is equals to this format using all the methods what you learned right now and this is x okay will print so uh, let's say the total sum till then is sum all right so after the loop completes you understood what is being happening here the x value is 1 sum value is 0 now when this value comes inside here, 1 is less than equals to 10 is a correct statement. So while this is a correct statement, it will go inside the loop and the sum which is 0 will be added with the x and it will become 1. 0 plus 1 and it will stored in the sum, we will be getting the print of that and the next line the x will be incremented that is x equals to 1 plus 1 becomes 2 then the again loop will go 2 is less than 10 and it goes like this right and then the last this line is after the loop right so we'll come after the loop after completing other things and then we'll write the total sum till 10 is sum let's run this and you see the outcomes with sum is equals to 1 s is equals to 2 and sum is equals to 3 s is x is equals 3 4 4 it's 10 for 5 15 6 21 and it goes like this so till 10 it's 55 all right you even have a formula for that, like if your n is equal to 10, you can just print easily. Uh, in mathematics, you have this. So basically, you need integer division. Right? n into n plus 1 by 2 for the mathematics students you might be getting it. Okay. Now sometimes in the loops the very important thing in the for loop is range. And what is a range? Basically an interval you can say. A limit you can say. Starting limit, stopping limit. Like see, uh, sometimes we go to the shops and we say that give me, uh, give me like show me some clothes of from this range to this range. Okay. The higher limits and the upper lower limits and all. Okay, all right. So uh, syntax is very easy. If you write range, the very first thing you are writing the starting number, then you are writing the stopping number, and if you don't write anything, if this is an optional. In fact, the starting is also an optional. So you write the start, the stop, and the interval. These three things are there. Okay. Now let's see. So if I write a range of 40, it makes a sense that the starting number is 0, stopping number is 30. But the outcomes you will be getting is only from 0 to 29. That's it. Okay. You give me run this. Print range of 0 to 30 which range 0 to 30 see the same things if I write 0 to 30 it is still 0 to 30 if I only write 30 it's still 0 to 30 right we'll show this in the for loop so you'll be getting a lot of things here right uh, in the case of print if I say the same thing like having a list so let's try uh, let's write a list of range of numbers from 0 to 30 or only 30 so you'll see a list of numbers going from 0 if I just print this right 
I see numbers starting from 0 and going to the 29. Okay, like that. So, list of 5 would be 0 to 4. Uh, one second, oh, sorry. Range we haven't written. Range. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now, similarly, what the interval works? Now, if in this case I write from 0 to 5 in the intervals of 3, that means in the gaps of 3. So, obviously, only 0 in the gaps of 3 will get 3, and there is no, nothing else, right? Because there is only 5. If I make it 6, it will get 0, 3, right? If I make it 7, we will get the another term for the 3, that is 0, 3, and 6. Because 1 greater you have to write if you want the next number. Like if you want a range uh, till number 5, then obviously you will have to write it till 6. Then you will get the things. See, till 6. If you want the numbers from 1 to 6, if you want the numbers from 0 to 100, the even numbers from 0 to 100, it goes from 0 to 100 in the intervals of 2, that's it, right, easy. And these are the even numbers, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and all 98 till, or the hundreds are also there, but with the intervals of 2, this will be the output, alright. If you want 100 even, you have to write 102 to get the answer, 100 there also. Alright, so I think this is clear, okay. So this is the working of a range. Oh, moving next. So next come the for loop, as I said, like working of a range we'll be seeing here, right, what we are going to do. Okay. Now in for loop what happens, we exactly do the number of iterations, everything is same as uh, same in the while loop we did. Just here comes the for keyword, the conditions and all things are same, right? In, in uh, the while you have some two statements, that is, uh, the is that? continue and break, yeah, continue and break. We'll see what it is. Okay, let's go with the for first. Or let's see if it does. If I say i is equals to 10, alright, and I say while, right, while my i value becomes equal equals to 3. What I have to do is, while this becomes 3, or the very first, while it is less than equals to 3, print the value of i and as soon as it becomes 2 come out of the loop that's it so see the outputs what you are going to get while i i is still equals to 10 right so i think print i is given like once again oh yeah i'm not even incrementing it and if it is not such then have to write i plus equals to 1. I will be incrementing or is it? Okay. It should be 0. And you getting 0, 1 and 2. Alright. So, till it is less than 3, you are getting things. And if I make suddenly that 1. So, just after 1, it will break up. Right? It will break out of the loop or you can say come out of the loop, right? The same if you want to skip this value, we can make this the same program in different way. In that case, like I say i plus equals to 1. I will be incrementing this to um, if, depending on doing it later on this. Now, if this is equal equals to something what I want, I will continue. Basically, I'm going to skip it that, that value. So, 
yeah an incrementation is being done there so we just need to print the value of pi uh, 0 is there so it's 2 3 4 5 so as soon as i becomes 1 it will get the output continue basically be skipping that or as soon as it becomes 3 will be skipping up those things 1 2 4 and 5 okay this is the working the same Let's go with the false statement. Right, so here let's say I have a list of numbers. Okay, these are the list of numbers. And again, here I am writing the sum is equal to 0 now. Okay. Now, for the number of iterations, I say only the iteration. Okay. For the number of iterations in the numbers, the sum will be equal to the same thing sum plus the iterations. Okay. And with the same thing I'll be printing up here. Now I'll say that this is the sum is equals to percent s. Okay. And the iteration number is equals to percent s. And then we'll write percent uh, s values. So the very first will be the sum value, the next will be the iteration value. Okay. And after that, we'll just print sum the sum is sum. And you see, sum 1 is the iteration number 1, sum 2, uh, basically sum 3 is the iteration number 2. Iteration number 3 is sum 6, iteration in iteration 4 the sum becomes 10, in 5 it is done. And so iteration number 10 becomes 55 and so the sum is 55. All right. Uh, sir, we can write now sum, uh, sum plus equal to iteration. Mm -hmm. Plus equals to iteration. Uh, in the loop, uh, sum plus equal to iteration. Hmm. Fine. Yeah, fine. Okay. So uh, these are the functions of a string and like the concept of a loop, right? that is how it is being done. The believe strings and loops are clear, okay. Now uh, sometimes we work on like, it's very interesting actually, a program like when you want to search directly something from Google, right. Let's say that's uh, a very good program actually. Google search program. So you need something to be installed in your system. Right? We'll see what is try and all. We'll learn. Okay. So you see that from Google search, we are just importing the search one. Okay. And except. Import we just understand what is being done, right? Don't go for the programs right now. We'll learn what is the errors and all. Okay. So if there is any export uh, import error, handle that and print no module in Google form. Okay. Like if, if there is an export, if, uh, sorry, imported, what is the time? 53. Who is there? Home car share. Uh, let's go. So have next class. Alright, fine. So if there is an error, we will be getting this. Okay. No uh, module name this. Form. Oh, okay. I just remove.
Okay. Now, let's say the user is giving some input to search what he wants to or what she wants to search. So enter or just search me. Right, yes, right. So whatever you search for X in the search and the loops, right? For X in the search, whatever you search, right? We have imported a search function from here. So search is then we are giving user what user has search then we are giving various things right the tld domains what we are going to use so the very one let's say adopt com or dot go if better it is okay and the number of uh, values or the iterations you can say on to be displayed it's five okay let's stop at ten basically and cause is equals to 2 means the best iteration value the least number you give you get the uh, cause iteration value to them, right let's run this let's see uh, we got an invalid error what is that syntax error is there import error oh, okay let's run this let's see still an invalid okay here what is it user equals to input for x in the search okay 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 i haven't printed anything so you have to print the x what the user search on okay so search means there let's say you searched for okay like edit fabric on this okay let's run this you'll get the similar outputs just wait a moment so you can see it is fabrica.net.com and all these things okay all right. so what is that uh, fluxes you can go for anything like uh, alexa you get a lot of things right so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in the ten iterations, it stopped. Like you give uh, stop number at twenty. Number of times it search was five. Run this. Alexa, it's the same thing. I'm going okay. We'll go to the top three iterations, and you see the numbers going up. Will keep on going and we'll go to three until it stops. Uh, sir, pause two means pause two. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sir, pause two means pause two. Pause, pause two. Yeah, so asking for yes, anyone is asking for pause two, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that is like uh, the best, uh, you can say on, what do you say, like we connect from the server to server, server connections, you can say on, like, that is called pause. Okay, top search result, top search result. Yeah, uh, you can say the lapse between the, what is that for us, HTTP request when we go for that, like, so we can say the la time which is being lapsed in between the request, that is the pause. Okay, sir. Okay. Get it. All right. So these are the things. Uh, easy one, actually. And uh, this TLD, what you can see here is the top level domain. Okay. So num is basically the number of results you want. And the stop is the, uh, the number of iterations. What you are going through there. Okay. And other things. The last result you want to keep and all. Okay. So these are the things. So tomorrow we'll go with the important questions of the strings, around 40-50 questions a day, and we'll move forward then.